Shaking bones. Been a while. Well, well, well. If it isn't the old smirk of social justice, imagine my shock. I'm Saladino. Many video games are a product of the times they were created in. As we look to recreate and remaster these stories for modern audiences, it's important to consider the implications of these harmful portrayals and do our part to rewrite new history. That <laughs> makes no sense. Not repeated. We applaud our peers at Crystal Dynamics for their reflections and corrections. Clap, clap, clap emoji. Well, it's just one clap, but... Now, of course, this nonsense tweet is in support of the frankly vile and spiteful content warning that's at the beginning of the new Tomb Raider remasters Crystal Dynamics published. I think it only happens one time. The first time you put up the game, you get this content disclaimer. I've done a video on it. They're basically just saying, hey, look, the original Tomb Raider games were racist and prejudiced and harmful. We condemn them. We condemn you for playing the game. We condemn Aspire for remastering it. And we condemn the original creators. But we're not going to change anything uh, because it's history and we're going to let you see just how hateful and harmful you are and you need to learn from this. <laughs> That's essentially what the content disclaimer says. Now, come to find out, they actually did edit something. I don't know if they came directly from Crystal Dynamics or if somebody at uh, Aspire just said, well, before anybody attacks us, let's take this part out. Maybe they thought they were going to be censored. I don't know. But they edited this guy named Pierre's jacket. He had this naked babe on the back of his jacket, and now they put a bikini on her. And stuff like that is, is small, but it's very tiresome to see that they constantly do this thing where women can't look sexy. you got to be afraid of this little pixelated nude image in a game. It's not a big deal. You know, somebody was saying in the comments of my last video was like, you got great content. I don't understand, you know, why you have all these loose women like clips of loose women, you know, like, you know, e-girls, try on hall girls or whatever in your videos. And I'm like, because it's not a big deal. Like, I don't care if you have a problem with the morals of the woman who's actually twerking or whatever. I don't care. I'm a straight man. I like attractive women. I'm not making a value judgment on this woman's morals. This is not my future wife. It's not my, my sister. It's not my girlfriend. This is not anyone related to me. It's not somebody I'll never meet in life. It's just an attractive woman. I don't care that she's twerking. I don't care if you have some hang up about modern society going to hell because of e-girls. She looks good. And the point of pretty much all my videos is that feminists have invaded these spaces and have pretended that finding a woman attractive is the worst, most horrible thing in the world. And that sexualizing them harms society in some way. But it's like, no, like there are attractive women out there. Putting attractive women in a video game is not harming anyone. And you're literally pretending that women like this don't exist. But I can show you, just go online. Even if, like that one insane green-haired woman was saying in um, that clown Jovian's video where he's going around asking people about Stellar Blade's design and trying to get them to attack gamers for finding her attractive. That woman talked about, these are just people who've never touched a woman before. You don't have to touch a woman to know a woman is attractive or not. You don't have to do that. Literally, especially now. Go online. Porn is the biggest thing. Porn is the reason why the internet has expanded so much. <laughs> you know, and I'm not even going to get into this thing about, oh, you're addicted to porn. You don't have to be addicted to porn. You could literally just go to most social media sites and see women making themselves up to be attractive. They're not deliberately making themselves ugly unless they're sex negative feminists who are trying to defeat the male gaze. So anyway, so that's my thing about how stupid it is, even though it's a very small change and that's not going to stop me from getting the game. It's just really annoying to see that they edited, it. even though like, so the thing is now Crystal Dynamics, when they did their content warning, they were just talking about, we're not going to take out the racism and the prejudice, but Hey, guaranteed you <laughs> we're going to edit any sexiness. We can't, they're not going to be able to change Laura's design and her look, but Hey, if we can, and I don't know if it's actually Crystal Dynamics, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to get away with saying that's nudity. That's going to cause a lot of trouble. It's going to be censored. It's going to be a mess. So it's, rather than dealing with whatever hassle that they themselves would create, they took that out. It's annoying. It's dumb, whatever. So, but what's funny about this 
beyond the fact that out of nowhere, Compulsion Games just come swooping in with a cape to help boost this stupid ass warning. Because this is not this disclaimer from Crystal Dynamics. This isn't actually on Crystal Dynamics' Twitter. It's not on the official Tomb Raider. It's a fan site or a, a news site that put out that content warning or an image of it. And then all of a sudden, just assholes at Compulsion Games decides to come in and because they know the thing is they know it was something that's not popular with actual gamers. The fact that they turned off the replies to the tweet shows that they knew that they were just adding fuel to the fire, that they were being obnoxious about it. And it's funny how the tweet is like rewrite new history. Funny because that, you know, that stood out as bad. A lot of people have already pointed that out, but that's not even the original tweet. The original tweet is, it's important to consider the implications of these harmful portrayals and do our part to rewrite history, not repeat it. So they didn't even say rewrite new history. That's why new history sounds so stupid because they, they said rewrite history. And then when they got clowned on that, they then tried to clean it up by putting rewrite new history, which makes no sense. They said the quiet part out loud. They're trying to rewrite history. In all my videos, I talk about it all the time. 1984, Newspeak, uh, The Party. These are all the tools of these social justice warriors, these cancel pigs. They are not the good guys. Like, okay, when Trump became president, the main thing cancel pigs were crying about was, oh no, now that Trump's president, this is going to be 1984. You need to read 1984 to see what Trump's America is going to be or whatever, right? The thing is, when you actually read 1984, it's clear that it's not about Trump's America. It's about cancel culture. It's about SJWs. It's about extreme leftists who care only about controlling and dominating their political enemies and any issue that they have with sex or language. You know, the way that they want to control the meaning of words through newspeak. You know, you can't say blind playthrough because blind people will be upset. Like, Words can have more than one meaning and they can't be related to a particular context. Everything has to be reduced to it's the most obvious thing that they can turn themselves into victims in order to gain power over a particular space. Whole modern audience thing is a meaningless term. It just means we don't like the audience that this stuff actually has. We don't consider these people our audience. There is a much more deserving group of people out there that consists of people who want to see ugly black lesbians as the star of every video game. They want to see ugly versions of Lara Croft and Aloy from Horizon Forbidden West or whatever. That's what modern audience means. It doesn't mean that people actually want this stuff. It means that we don't want the people who want the good shit. <laughs> and Kyle, he showed this woman, um, talked about how she hates games in a couple of his videos now. And actually, that's the community manager for Compulsion Games. The people who put out this Yas Queen uh, tweet, big upping this vile spiteful content disclaimer at the beginning of the uh, new Tomb Raider remasters. And it was quite obviously her. She's the one, this particular woman talking about how much she hates gamers. She's the one who came up with the, that tweet and the tweets that Kyle shows in his videos talk about how much, honestly, I hate gamers. And the other one that really stuck out to me was this, the sheer level of scum sucking filth that permeates the gaming community is abhorrent. I'm disgusted to even share an interest with so many terrible people. That's the thing. It's so offensive to me because it's like you invaded the space. You invited yourself in. You forced yourself into this. This is not something that you care about. You're using this as a platform for your bullshit political agenda. A lot of these women, especially these feminists, these LGBTQ rights activists, they came from college with these useless degrees and like, you know, feminism and Buffy and that kind of thing. They couldn't find anywhere to use it except the <laughs> actual Places that they've been taught to uh, despise and to criticize because it was bad and hateful and deeply rooted in ethnic prejudices and that kind of thing. She's in this space as an interloper, but she acts like she's the true audience for it. You know, modern audiences. It's funny because her timeline is just terrible. I'm not inviting you to go there to harass or anything, but it's really terrible in the sense that it's so depressing. She's so activist brained that everything is about oil spills and genocide and all this stuff. And it's, these are things that, yes, it's worthy to be concerned about and uh, to talk about in some way. But you don't capture an entire hobby that's meant for people to be, like, to enjoy and to have fun with. You don't capture that and use that as a political weapon against the people who actually are here to enjoy it. Like I said this in another video. You don't go to a hobby where people know what they want 
and tell them what they want is wrong and then demonize them when they say, what do you mean it's wrong? This is why I'm here. This is what created the hobby. What created the community and the hobby is the things that we want and the things that we made popular. You can't come now to us and tear it down and say, you're wrong. You're scum sucking filth because you don't want ugly women in video games. It is not about, well, I don't want a story about an ugly woman. It's about don't take a beautiful woman, make her ugly because you're punishing me for liking attractive women. They've got political agendas. That they're shoving down everybody's throats. They're mad that because they don't have any talent, people are not putting up with it. Even this game, this, what is it called? South of Midnight. This is this, the next, um, compulsion games that's coming out. They're the ones who did the We Happy Few, which I was, it was a game I was actually interested in because I like that whole mod aesthetic and it looked like a Stanley Kubrick type game, you know, like a clockwork orange or something like that looked like something from the invisibles. But when the reviews came out and the reaction to it was really just like blah, then I just sort of forgot about it. Never played it. Never thought about it. Really. Um, this new game, I think it's called South of Midnight, but, or Smirk of Midnight, you know, you got the, once again, the black female lead, she's smirking and she's not attractive. And she's, it's just, it's not interesting. It's not, I'm definitely not going to buy any games from Compulsion Games thanks to people like this community manager who's spending more time attacking gamers for being gamers than she is just promoting games and promoting the hobby. It's funny. One of the few tweets about games that didn't involve somebody talking about their disability or their race was one where she's congratulating Maximilian Dude from some kind of award or some kind of recognition he got. And she's saying how he's the reason why she even got into like streaming and games in the first place. And it's like, of course, that's why you got into it. You didn't get into it because your stepdad gave you a comic book when you were a little kid, right? You got into it because you saw a popular YouTuber and you thought that looks like fun. That's something I can do. And that's how you got into it. And now you have the nerve to turn around and attack gamers for the hobby they love because they don't want your bullshit politics in it. 